Okay, before I move to let well to basically flip flops, I'm just gonna spend a few more time about latches. In this case, I'm gonna introduce the uh, D latch. Um, so last time we have been talking about latch SR. Um, so as a quick, very 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 quick recap. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, this, which is bistable circuit, so not not. We're basically essentially losing time because we have an input which is zero, and then we, you know, uh, knot it and get a one, and we knot it again and we get zero all the way to the output. Um, however, you know, uh, because these, the, the, those two are, you know, an, an even number of knot gates. So A not not is equal to A. Well, yes, kinda, but you know, every circuit, uh, every element in a circuit is actually adding delay. Uh, so essentially right now we're, you know, losing time doing useless stuff uh, in order to keep this value to zero. And this way we're basically creating a memory, but this is a very, very, very basic one. It is hard to, you know, change the input value to this one to store it, and uh, it, it, honestly, let's be clear, it's not, you know, it's pain in the butt. Um, so if we move on um, and we rearrange those two NOT gates and we change them with, um, with OR gates, with a NOT here, um, then we're gonna get an S and set reset latch, so an SR latch, which is gonna give me the output Q and Q naught as the um, other output, which is generally you know available for because you know you don't actually build it um, yourself. You generally buy a chip, which is an latch SR, and it's presented like this, uh, in which you know you get some kind of black box model, so you don't actually know what's inside, but you know how it works, and you know that you have two inputs, a set input and reset input, and you get Q and, you know, Q naught. Uh, so Q is almost, most of the time, almost, uh, almost you know, uh, all the time what you want, uh, but, you know, whoever manufactured it also gives you the Q naught, you know, just in case you want it, you want it to be um, the opposite of what you get for whatever purpose you, you you want and you make your circuit for. So this is the reason why it's there. Um, now I'm going to talk about D latch, a D latch. So what's what is essentially a D latch? So a D latch um, can actually be made um, if we look at the latch SR. So set reset, and we basically change. Uh, the well, we basically connect the input uh, D, which we're, we're gonna call D, straight into the input of the uh, set of this SR latch. And what we're gonna get is basically um, something like this. So remember, this is an SR latch. Uh, a D latch is basically something like this. So we have D, which goes to an end gate, um, and the output of this end gate is actually going to my uh, OR gate, which is a NOT, so it's an OR gate, uh, which goes all the way to here, and it's going to give me my Q not. I'm not gonna write Q N anymore. I'm just gonna let me just. Yeah, it makes more sense to write Q not. So this is Q not. Um, then here, we're basically gonna have the same thing as before, um, because essentially we're gonna have a latch S R just like just like this one. So this is a latch S R essentially where we have here um, the output Q, and here we have, you know, another, whoops, yeah, I'm not really good in throwing those things, anyway. Um, almost all, all the time you do that on your computer, on your laptop or desktop or whatever. Um, so, you know, you, you <laughs> generally you don't do that, this, you know, with your 
bare hands. Anyway, um, so you're basically connected to a latch SR. So this is a latch SR, just like before. Okay, there we go. Uh, and here we got another AND gate, just like this one. However, and oh, well, those two are actually chained together. Okay, so those two are chained together. Um, and from here, we have a NOT gate, which goes all the way down to here. Um, here, though, what do we get? Well, as an input here, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna call it G, uh, but this input here is actually the clock. So what do we have? Well, um, this is a D latch. Okay. Um, the the element like this one is going to be with le yet another level of abstraction. So D, G, Q, and Q naught. I'm gonna have D and G. Well, I could let, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. So this is a D latch. Um, what we get here, essentially, um, is you know two inputs D, which is the signal that we want to memorize. Okay, so what the, the, the data that we want to store, either zero or one, um, which is why it's called D latch. So D is the input D latch memorizes D. That can be death latch, whatever. Um, so yeah, we can memorize D either when it's zero or one, we can memorize it. And the other input is G, um, and it's basically the clock for, you know, the sampling. What's a clock? I'm pretty sure that, you know, you're, you're watching this video and pretty much every everybody, you know, all of you, um, have uh, either a computer or a smartphone and stuff like that. Have you ever noticed that when you use that, um, you have your CPU that runs at a certain, for instance, which runs at a certain clock? Well, the clock is actually, you know, um, it's a signal which it's like, you know, it's like a sampling. It's like every time there is a clock, you know, let's suppose that this one is a clock. Every time I'm touching this sheet of paper, then the, the circuit, but any circuit that receives the clock is going to do something. You know, it's going to receive something and I'm going to check for it. And I'm going to read those values and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do something with this. So the fastest it goes, um, the more sampling I have, the slower it goes, the less sampling I have. Um, so whenever I get the, uh, you know, a clock, so a pulse, like uh, essentially, yeah, a pulse, then I'm going to check for the value of D. Uh, which is why in this case, I, I said that it's like sampling. Uh, now, of course, there are many people that among of you who may have say, okay, I'm going to overclock my GPU and CPU and so on, but, um, or even downclock it, um, which is fine. Uh, all, all, all you were doing was actually, you know, well, yeah, sure, giving it more, a bit more power, um, but essentially was, you know, going to check it faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, and therefore it was going to be more, you know, um, have more performance. Um, so yeah, this is basically the clock, what the clock means. And in this case, it's gonna be the sampling. So how many times can to check for the value of D in order to, you know, memorize into this uh, latch, uh, which is called D latch. 
Now um, Q is actually the output and Q naught is the you know not output again. Um, it's there because you know you have you essentially don't uh, make this circuit you buy just a chip which is you know like this one and for whatever just like the um, latch SR um, you want to have Q most of the time but if for any reason you want to have Q naught you know they just put it there and it's available for you um, so that you don't have to put um, an inverter at the very uh, bottom of the chain here um, so now essentially uh, which a uh, D-latch um, during the, the, the sampling phase uh, given by the, the, the G, the clock, uh, the D-latch is like, you know, um, every variation uh, of the signal, of the input signal D, um, you know, it goes to the output. So the last value, um, which is basically in the, you know, a clock is like, let me just show you, it's like this, right? So this is like, this is how you see the clock, right? Something, something like this, that goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on all the time, right? So um, this is, uh, this is called the rising edge and this is called the falling edge, okay? So essentially every time uh, that I check for this um, in the folding edge um, is of G and this is, as I said, this is the clock, this is G. Every time I'm checking it um, and on the folding edge, uh, then I'm gonna have the, the one I memorized, okay? I can either check it on the rising or on the folding edge. Uh, generally, well, generally, actually, you've got to be 100% uh, totally uh, fair. Uh, you don't actually get G here. You get something if you have a component, right? And you get something like this. Uh, this is generally when, like, you have D for your data and uh, Q and Q naught for the output. Uh, this one is generally a rising edge and... Um, Otherwise, if you don't get this one, but you get uh, another thing is a falling edge. So this one is actually a rising edge, but it can be different and it's gonna be a, a falling edge. Now, when it's actually memorizing the data here, this D edge, it keeps in output the sample value. And it's, you know, it, the, the thing is that it, 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 if the change in D happens, you know, here, when the clock is rising and not when it's falling, okay, um, then in Q, I still gonna have the old value because every time, in this case, every time it goes here, so it's fall is falling and it's falling and it's falling and it's falling and it's falling. Um, I'm gonna you know sample this value and memorize it and put it to Q. However, if the value of D, uh, for instance, is changing here, okay, and it goes here, my output, and then it goes on and on and on and on. My output uh, from this is actually going to be still zero, 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 zero. And now that it's falling, bam, it's gonna bump up and jump to one. So, you know, there is a little bit of delay uh, if you are, you know, check, if your input is actually changing when you're not sampling it, when you're not, you know, checking for, for this. So this is one of the things of the D latch. Um, now there is there is a problem with all this uh, because you know, and this is given because of the sampling. 
um, you cannot actually um, you cannot actually detect a change if you're not sampling, as I said, at least this, you know, kind of shift. So when the clock is high, if something happens, you're not gonna see it. And this can be a problem for whatever reason, for many, many different reasons. Um, so sure, if your signal, uh, if your signal still goes on and on and on, you can have a little delay, which, you know, can be acceptable, but, but if, just, just think if your signal is, signal is like this, like a, a direct delta, like a very, very, very tiny, um, tiny push, like to the, so it goes high, and then it goes high, oh, shoot, it's gonna be, this should be one, so this should be at the same height. Okay, so it goes like this and like this and so on. So every time it goes high, it's um, it's when you know the clock is going high, but then it's going down again, and you're not gonna see it. You're not gonna see it. You're gonna check it when it's you know low. So when it's you know zero, it's not one, and you're always gonna have zero in the output. So this is. Clearly, this is a problem. Um, however, to solve this problem, you can use something different. So not a delatch as a memory element, but a flip-flop instead. So the next uh, uh, topic is actually going to be about flip-flops. So, yeah, this is pretty much why I wanted to spend a few more words about uh, latches. And again, as a very, very quick recap, we started by figuring out memory elements with those two knots. Um, then we said, okay, this is a memory element technically because we're, you know, losing time doing nothing, but it's hard uh, to set. So we're going to move to something which is a little bit better, which is a set reset, latch. So an SR latch. But even the SR latch has something, some problems because, you know, you can have a forbidden configuration in which you have S equal to 1 and R equal to 1, in which case the output is undefined, is unknown. Um, so, you know, it can be a problem, it's not optimal, yeah, yeah. Can, can, can we do better? Yeah, we can, and we move to a D-Latch. So D-Latch only has one input, which is D, and the other input is just the clock. So this is something that goes uh, high and low, high and low, high and low, high and low, and it always checks it uh, when it's go it's utterly low it goes down so when it's falling but this can you know it has another problem now uh, which is you know if there is a change when the clock is you know rising so when it's high then it's not gonna detect it and it's still gonna get in output the old value which is clearly clearly a problem so can we do better than this even better than the d latch and the answer, as I said, is yes. But we're gonna have to use flip-flops for that. Therefore, I'm gonna talk about flip-flops in the next uh, episode. So stay tuned for flip-flops. Cheers and bye for now.